him here. Howard Meek and Order, I want to thank each and every one of you, as usual, for your uh, concern and by uh, being here. First item on the uh, agenda is roll call for the present county board. Thank you for your time and your dedication. Next item is the agenda. We've had an opportunity to look it over to hear a motion that we set the agenda printed. I made that motion, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion to hear a second. 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 Any comments or which one? Which one? Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Okay. <laughs> any, any comments or questions? Any comments or questions? Yeah. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Carried. Thank you. Next item is approval of minutes from our previous meeting, that being the February 17th workshop, February 18th regular meeting. Do I hear a motion? We'll set the print. Make that motion, Mr. Mayor. A motion, I hear a second. Second. Second for uh, Mayor Pertensha. Any comments or questions? Comments, changes, questions? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same. It's carried, thank you. City Manager, correct, no public hearing? No public hearing. Um, visitor presentation. Ms. Unit Smart is unable to be with us tonight, so Mr. Bill Barton and Mr. Harrison are going to speak with us on the weeping time. not be here, but uh, hope you all heard her last night. Uh, she primarily wanted to extend her thanks to everyone, to you, Mayor, to Mayor Crover, Pam Shaw, uh, to uh, everyone else on the council, uh, additionally to the Dairy News for the good work that they did in publicizing this for all the law enforcement who were out there on Butler Island that day mm -hmm. to keep everyone safe for St. Cyprian's and for Darien Methodist Church, also for the folks in Brunswick who were here, for the Chamber and for the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, I think, and I agree with you just entirely, it was a pretty good pass for the first, for the first chance. Yes. It turned out well. Uh, I know that she and the rest of the members of that committee are looking for better things next year, hopefully an expanded program. Certainly thanks to Mandy at the very, very, yes very last minute, <laughs> Before, last minute, uh, we got a very generous grant which allowed to expand even for that day, had dinner and some other things, it allowed for some great things to sell, meeting time commemoration bags and t-shirts, and uh, that's about it, just she wanted to thank everyone, and uh, she's looking forward to again, a bigger event next year, and I know I heard her say this last night, so I will just reiterate it because I have her notes, the official Unisport you know, notes, that as uh, you all think about, uh, and she was specifically thinking about the Houston House over on the Butler Island, mm -hmm. but as you all think about the opportunities within the city uh, for the development of structures and buildings, rehab, just to make sure that opportunities might be there for groups such as the Weeping Time, uh, the Gullah Geechee community, uh, as a way to sort of anchor that community in the programs they offer. So, again, many thanks to all that you all did. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate everything that uh, you two and all of the work we want to do. Uh, I do would like to say I'd like to see the Gullah Geechee community uh, pick back up and uh, get uh, some members and all on it. Also, I'd like to say that. Uh, Happy birthday, Miss Eunice Moore. She's yes. not here tonight. Right. Right. Happy right. birthday. Tell her happy yes. birthday. So when you see her around, tell her happy yes. birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Yes. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, next uh, that's all of our business presentation. Okay, thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mandy, 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 um, just again, this will be a very short presentation. Um, the blessing of the fleet has been postponed. We are waiting for additional information to decide when the date will be that we reschedule it. Um, we were, are working diligently with all of our sponsors, all of our vendors, all of our boat captains, everybody figuring all this out. Um, it's been a it's been a learning experience I think for anyone that's in the event event planning business this year. Um, we're all going wow, what do we do? Um, 
I appreciate all of, all of y'all's help and guidance um, with postponing the event. I know that that was not an easy decision for any of us because this is our biggest economic impactor through the year for a lot of our businesses, and it's 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 a tough one. So. I am saying that we are not canceling it. We are postponing it. It will happen in 2020. Yes. Yeah. Um, again, thank you. We the state has put our application for a license on hold, and when we get it, the dates correct, correct, they'll reissue it. I don't know if we're going to have to do another application, and you, can, you and I can talk about right. that. Sure. Okay. But thank you again for all y'all did for us, y'all are just so accommodating and we appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your optimistic dedication with all of our work. Next item, unfinished business. Uh, appoint two members of the planning commission as four-year term. Their term will start uh, August, I mean my March 1st. We will take action on that tonight. They begin March 1st. That's good. Yeah. That's more March 1st. It will expire February 29th of 2023. We had a ceremony. I'm glad to see we had a ceremony. Uh, people interested in, in it and, uh, took some good uh, time and consideration and going through it. Uh, two, we uh, picked out of it, and I hear a motion that we uh, appoint Bill Martin and Griffin Lawson to uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. Make it. I have a motion by Council Lady. I second. Mayor Pro Tem. I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem. Shaw, do you second? I second. I have a second for Council. Good, dear. Any questions or comments? Those two are replacing uh, Charlie Potts and Paul Nix, is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any more comments, questions? All in favor, aye. Aye. Those things, carried. Next one is uh, to appoint two members to the Darien Downtown Development Authority. That's also a four-year term. And with that, wants to start March 1st. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, and again, we had uh, several, a uh, couple of good names on this one. Uh, two we picked out. I uh, hear a motion to appoint Bob Bates and Jackson Thomas. I make a motion. I have a motion. I hear a second. second. Comments or questions? And those two are replacing Fred Struggles and Russ Quarter. Right. 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 Okay. Yes, sir. We'll replace uh, Russ Quarterman and Fred Struggles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any more comments, questions? Do I hear uh, all in favor say aye? Aye. Opposed, same. Carry. We do appreciate uh, your time, your dedication, and your interest in it, and look forward to working with you. My correct city manager uh, finishes up all of our unfinished business. That's correct, Mayor. Uh, new business. Uh, financing for the new Minnesota Law Enforcement Building. So yes, sir. We're not giving up on it? No, sir. We're not giving up on it. It's a daily struggle. Uh, I got one thing before you get into that. It's just some comments and stuff. Uh, I get you to clarify it and everything. Last night we were talking about this where we said that uh, we were waiting on, that we had a few issues and all. But there is nothing wrong with our books or anything no, like that. There is nothing absolutely. wrong with our audit and everything. It's just getting. Uh, in touch with the auditors and get back to us and get no thing. Absolutely nothing wrong with our numbers. That's what I want to make sure where everything is looking on that. Our, our <laughs> numbers are probably the best and most accurate they've probably ever been in the city's history, to be honest with you. Appreciate you want to the software updates we have allow the sum of the clothes the rest of them. I mean, we have real time access to our budget numbers, line item and overall. Uh, yeah, yeah. this was a completely separate issue and that really turned out not to be much of an issue. But the vehicle we were going to use to finance this is what turned out to be the issue. And in the end, uh, we reached terms with Southeastern Bank. Um, I, I joked with them a little bit uh, that this process being drug out into that felt us a little bit. 
uh, we actually got about a, a rate of about 40 basis points to the better. Uh, Southeastern extended a rate of 2.92% to its finances. And that, that is uh, outstanding, I can tell you. And don't forget this not only not only involves the construction of the new building, but the purchase of the land itself, which we've been leasing from Southeastern Bank. Uh, that does a couple of things for us from a cash flow perspective that will remove the property from the ad valorem tax rolls. Uh, and we've been paying the ad valorem taxes on that. That will remove that from the ad valorem tax rolls. And uh, the other side of that is we'll vacate our, our, our uh, location out at CRC. If we lease from them now, that will free that space up. And again, CRC has a tenant ready to move in. Uh, we've had a good relationship with them, and I'm glad for them that they have somebody ready to come in and fill that spot up, because they've done a lot for us. And, and as they'll tell you, we've done a lot for them. But a really good relationship, and I'm glad to have them in the community. Um, so we free those lease payments up to both entities, at least the, the uh, lease of the property now as well as the uh, lease at the CRC building. That will free that up and put that into one unit. So we're, we're, the, the total principal now is $1.3 million uh, on the borrowing. But remember, there's a, an existing debt of approximately $450,000 in Southeastern now that's being reincorporated back into this debt. Uh, I, I call it debt. It's really a capital lease, but that's the outstanding capital lease now. So what we've got is the new money we've got is about $850,000, which is what we've contracted with Copper to do. And those guys are ready to go. Uh, I, I spoke to them yesterday. Uh, they were hoping this turned out well. Your meeting, and, and they're ready to go. They're chomping a bit to go. They're excited about it. And I'm excited about it. I know the police department is, too. They're, they're ready to come back in the city. So if we approve this tonight, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't know how if that interest rate's unbeatable. With the economic uncertainty, I'm, I'm glad Southeastern still extended that rate to us, and they did. Uh, so it's my recommendation that uh, we agree with financing the building. We'll be using GMA's bricks and mortar program. Uh, it'll be a, a, a purchase, technically a purchase by GMA with an installment sale back to us, and we'll lease it from them through the term of the installment sale. At the conclusion of that, it's ours. Um, so it's my recommendation you authorize the borrowing of 1.3 million at 2.92 percent to both purchase the property and pay off that capital lease by purchasing the property and construct our new municipal law court. What was the percentage? 2.92. 2.2 million. And that's uh, be about 7100 a month. That's right. That's correct. Okay. Do I hear a motion that we uh, approve this financing for the new municipal law enforcement building? I make the motion. I have a motion by Council Lady Goodyear. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a second by Council Butler. Any comments, discussion? Comments, discussions? If we approve this tonight, we can we expect to uh, get started. But I'm looking at, at a return email from GMA Council right now. While I do not see it, that actually surprises me because I know they're ready to go to. Mm -hmm. So it could be within the next couple of weeks. I, that's my hope. Mm -hmm. Sure. It is. <coughs> okay. Any more comments, questions? Mayor, the only reason I hesitate to say that is a lot of places are short staffed right now. Oh yeah. Well, people are working from home. We're in kind of strange territory right, right now. That's, that's, without that, I would, I would tell you yes. Uh, but I, I, I hesitate to, to fully say within two weeks with the staffing issues everybody has. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go out of the ordinary. This is a big thing on us. Chief Howard, you got a comment you'd like to make before we start on this? <coughs> I'm putting, not putting you on the spot, but on the fire department, get ready to be next. Y'all did say we're ready to be I'm tired of being out there. Uh, this is where we belong. This is where we do our work and kind of uh, to uh, work in town and go out there and take care of your paperwork. I mean, it, the people need us here, and this is where we want to be. And I want to thank you guys for 
working so hard to do this for it. We, we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you've, been, you've been pretty much uh, most of the meetings with us and all, so if you agree with everything that's good to you and all. I love it. Yes. Yeah, we do appreciate your time and dedication on sleep and others. And our, uh, our police department uh, board that we had, I do appreciate it. But okay, yeah. any more comments or questions? Yeah. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, say. Security. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and send an email to them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to get started. Your resolution <laughs> <piece. Okay. laughs> I'm ready to get started. Uh, next one is domestic uh, hall of tipping fee. You want to give us a little update on this? Yes, Mayor, uh, based on some communications I had with surrounding communities, uh, it's my recommendation that we implement a $75 flat fee uh, for domestic wastewater haulers who, who use our plant. Uh, we're certainly willing to provide that service, but I think over the last little bit here, our current rates are low. Flat fee. I think it's I think it's more accurate when it comes to the, the processing of our waste uh, when we do that for the folks. And um, I think right now we're probably averaging about eighteen to twenty dollars a tip. And, uh, I think I think I, I think you were present with me when, when yes. Keith agrees that we're, we're losing money. On that. I don't mind providing the service, but uh, I don't want us to lose money on that because in the end that. That reflects back out to the folks who are paying their And just to clarify, if everybody knows what we're talking about, we're talking about the septic uh, tank trucks where they pump up the septic tanks and they bring it and dump it in our waste street. That's correct. Right. And uh, we do have a couple from out of county. So right. we want to do I hear a motion that we uh, impose a $75 flat fee for domestic all tipping fee? I'll make that motion, but I did have a comment. Okay. I got a motion. I hear it by Councilman I got a second by Councilman Good. Go ahead with your comment. Just a, a question, and this maybe city manager can answer. The Sheriff's Department, the jail, um, how much How much are um, they paying for our sewer system? Wait a minute, is that the same as this, or is that a different topic? Than topic? Uh, it's a different topic. You really make fees. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, we're currently, they don't pay the fees for our handling of their wastewater. Another question. Do we know how much is coming from the jail? Uh, the, the wastewater of the jail is not metered, but uh, you had posed that question a few minutes ago and I was able to contact Keith. His best estimate would be around 144,000 gallons a month. That's his best estimate. And that is not, he, he, he said, do not state him on that. Uh, that's that, just that's a guesstimate. That's a guesstimate. And I mean, it's an educated guess, but it is a guess because it's not needed. And I think that's where a lot of our trouble is coming from. Some of the stuff that's getting pushed down the oh, road. I think if you go to our bar screen, mm -hmm. we've got the largest collection of ramen noodle wrappers. And, yeah. and yeah. we got more to buy that, I guarantee you that. It's a, it's a serious, we, 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 it is. It's a serious matter. It's a, our wastewater treatment plant, we're spending a lot of money. Okay. We are. And that is, when we hit these tipping fees, it is going to help. But Still, I mean, we're growing city, uh, and that way, that's what we did. We invested our money out there, and every penny counts. Yes. Uh, I mean, Chief Howard, I'll put you on the spot again, but uh, you worked in that department for a little while. You got a comment on that? I did have a comment as far as the sheriff's office. They, they, they help us immensely as far as the uh, medical and stuff like that goes for our inmate. They they absorbed it probably ninety percent of that. They absorbed a lot of it. And uh, so you know it's kind of like a tit for tat thing. I mean they're they're helping us but we're also helping them as well. Well I know, so, I know in, in the past there was a trade off with they were housing yeah, all our inmates they, and they, they, house, they house all our inmates. Do they charge now for inmates? 
45 hours a day, something like that? 58 hours a day? Okay. I mean, that was, that a lot of that is in our in a government. It, 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 it is, but I'm just wondering that there is a, the only thing I can think that they really need to do out there is have a screen inside their uh, the worst work. And there's a band over there, which would right. probably be something they could do. So well, well, we talked about a bar screen, and that, that's been discussed for, for quite a while now. That's not in place yet, but I know that is on the radar. That's, I, that's I, something that we can probably get into at a different time. Yeah, uh, I, I, we'll I, go I, ahead with this chip and feed thing here and get that over with. Uh, any more comments, questions on the chip and feed? Charging seventy five dollars flat fee, and that is pretty much what they charge around other areas. Yes, sir. That's, that, that's correct. Okay. It wasn't that, that's a reasonable cost. Yeah. You're talking seven and a half cents for a thousand gallon truck if it's completely full, which they're almost never completely full, but still, yeah. that, that's that's based on that rate on that. That's but, not uh, it wasn't a figure we just throwing out. There. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Any more comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Carry. Thank you. Next item, purchase of a uh, fire ladder truck. And on all, all of these items, I know we're kind of going through them pretty quick tonight. They are big, uh, big money projects. We go into long discussion. Some of this we go into probably more discussion we need to at our workshop. So I encourage everybody to come to our workshop or maybe they can record our, our workshop for the uh, ones that are shut in. But the workshop is very important because that's where uh, y'all get the uh, the citizens get to give their input on, on everything and all before we get down to it. All right, do I have a, a motion that we purchase a fire, fire ladder truck? I make the motion that we purchase it. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? I will second. I second. Any comments, comments or questions? Mayor, just briefly, just to point out uh, the, the incredible work, quite frankly, that you did on this in the beginning uh, and you continue to do. Uh, this fire truck is going to be purchased for forty-seven thousand dollars, and uh, we will use FOSS funds to do that. And um, you also, quite frankly, negotiated the uh, disposition of a, of a couple of vehicles. You do. Oh, I agree. I agree, but I'll tell you, you did a fantastic job on that. And I think um, I think it's safe to say that the two vehicles that uh, we're disposing of, uh, the net value of those is negative. The the good part of the oh, it's yeah, good. the amount of repairs that would be required to get those functional and operational, they really have no value. And you negotiated and taken that and got an incredible deal on this, I'll tell you. Uh, and agreed to those terms and brought them back to the council. And I was there, I, I think you did a fantastic job. And I'll, I'll point out, but I see some, we got some firefighters in here tonight. Mm -hmm. And they put that truck through the ring. Uh, and they put it through full drafts. I think they were up there past 10 o'clock one night. I was on the phone with Chief Carwalk and discussing the truck. Drove by to see it, and uh, Mr. Sewell was out there again, still working on it. Uh, they've identified some small issues, but by and large, we're getting a, a fantastic truck here. And, and we need, our community needs it. We've got two apartments now that have multiple floors, and uh, potentially a hotel here that's going to have multiple floors. So it's something we need for the citizens. Uh, the chief, I know he's not here tonight, I believe he's working, but he has, he had, we had his full recommendation for this purchase and his department. I know they're here as well. I know they're happy and excited about it. And I know you're on that department, you know, volunteer, and I know you're excited about it. Well, we ready to get them to fill out the truck there. They, they need quick. That's right. So again, thank you for the work you did. Thank you. We got uh, some of our firefighters here with us. Uh, Thanks, Sewell's captain. So if we would, y'all would y'all stand up? If we would turn the camera to our firefighters there, and let's let people see our our firefighters. So you want to introduce? You want to introduce your firefighters here? But we're proud of them. You have right one. Gee, thanks. I'm Captain Sewell. This is Lieutenant Perry. This is one of our firemen, uh, Matt Angleton. The truck. Yeah, we're going to need it, and it's a great price. Uh, I you How much would you value that truck at market price? The truck that I looked at, two hundred fifty thousand. We get it for forty-seven, and we get rid of two trucks that is deadly. Uh, <laughs> straight out, that deadly. Yeah. So I so praised it as having no value. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
We do appreciate all that y'all do and everything. So thank you for working for that. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate all of it. Thank, thank, you. thank you guys for the work y'all did. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, have a, a motion and a second. Anyone comments, questions? Uh, I just had one quick one. Is the simple fact You're that farm two I, uh, <laughs> oh, right. 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 Listen, listen. Um, you know, this is about them because you know uh, we don't. You know, just like our police officers, sometimes we we don't need them till we need them, yeah, yeah. and we need to recognize them all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we keep calling it a fire truck, and it is, it is. And uh, you know, sometimes they say a deal's too good to be true, and that's what I told each one of them when I talked with them. I said, you know, but they looked at this truck and they looked it over top to bottom for three days before they said it's a. Sometimes you do find a diamond in the rough, and thank, thanks to the mayor and to all of y'all uh, yeah. that you, we found it. Um, the company did look and they knew what type of budget we had. They knew we couldn't afford it, 250 or, you know, when Sewell and Perry went up north, you know, they brought us back a $1 million bill. I said, <laughs> we can't afford one of them trucks right now. <laughs> but, but, but this is this this ladder truck is um, it is a, it is a and it is from the hard work from our mayor and I appreciate all of y'all's work uh, and uh, making sure that this truck is what we need. So thank you. We do appreciate it. Any more comments, questions? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, thank you. Carried, thank you. We do appreciate it, thank you. Uh, that's uh, all of our, on our agenda, you have anything else? Anything else? Okay, council report. Uh, Councilman Butler, would you like to start with I thought I was. Council report? Yeah, council report. Well, oh, I just, What's on my heart? Well, I just like I just want to commend our, <coughs> our firefighters on the job they did on the truck and the police officers for all sticking together and uh, you know wanting to get the new building and you know to get back to the city to protect all of us. And I just want to thank all the citizens coming out to the meeting and may God bless each and every one. Mayor Bird Jim Shop. I just have something short and off of this, something short. On that coronavirus, I just wanted to, to take it serious because it is serious. Um, make sure that you follow all the instructions. If they say don't go outside, they say don't go here, don't, don't do it because sometimes we think things are not as serious, but this one is. It is. And just be safe as possible. Watch out for your families and make sure the elderly are taken care of and you check on them. Uh, that's it. And everyone's doing a good job as we move forward in this 2020. Yeah, because we will have a blessing of feet, right, Mandy? <laughs> yes, we will, by the grace of God, right? Yes, I am. And the firefighters keep up the door. Amen. Please talk to us. Councilor Goodyear. I have no report, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Ski. Well, a couple of things. One, uh, I echo Mr. Butler, Councilman Butler. It is, it, you know, our firefighters and our, and our police, um, like I said, we need to recognize them all the time. Um, but our, um, we had uh, our last meeting, we had a um, discussion about our, um, the board, which, um, our downtown development board, um, the, and tonight we put two new members on there. Um, 
this council, we do not hire their executive director. We don't fire the director, and we don't direct their director. All the citizens do is pay their director. So, I thought that, you know, when this downtown development authority started, I don't believe it was meant for the city to flip the bill for 15, 20 years. I don't believe that. Um, I believe what we did is we got them started off in the right foot and they have ran, they have prosperous. Now they have a large budget and I think it's time for them to take over and pay their director and our citizens hold back. Um, at this time, you know, money is very important. The first of the year, what did this council do? We reduced every one of our, not our salaries, but we reduced our training pay. It was a huge step. But we have to save money where we can. Um, there's going to be some hard times coming, we know that. And these things like this wastewater treatment plant, these firefighters, our police, it costs money to run this city. And we have to be able to keep the money in the city. We have to. We cannot, we cannot fold. This council, I, I respect everyone up here for the work they do because Mr. Barton's prayer said a lot. You know, our, our city, you know, you see, you come down, you see, um, you see TK sign. He gives away, it, whatever. He gave away Valentine's present shop. This city, this city, needs a whole lot more TKs. But we got a lot of TKs here. We do. In these trying times that we have, we need to be more like him. And thank you for your prayer, <coughs> Bill. And, and thank you all. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Starting out, I'll send that uh, I'd like to recognize uh, <coughs> Councilman King. He, uh, oh, yeah. The state state lines club board has uh, appointed him as our second vice president for the state of Georgia. One of only two people that served on that board so, from our area. So, I right. do want to thank him for that. Doing ded dedicated work and everything for it. Uh, the other thing is public works. Public works got the city looking good. So we want to thank Wayne and uh, Norma Jane and their crew and all for that. They're doing good and everything. The other thing is, uh, I've been walking ditches, draining ditches and all. And I was asked people, please don't throw your washing machines and your leaves and everything in the uh, drainage ditch. Pull it outside the road in the city, pick it up and never dispose of it. Set it the road and some uh, junk man will come by and get it. But please don't throw it in that drainage ditch. Uh, so we got that taken care of and hopefully we get it all worked out. But I do want to thank each and every one for all that we're doing. and. Uh, I've been asked questions and everything. No, we hadn't closed restaurants down yet. No, we hadn't stopped uh, feed more than 10 people and meeting in the area, but it, it's probably coming. Mm -hmm. I think South Carolina's closing their restaurants it's down it's tomorrow, takeout only. Yeah, and Florida's already done theirs. And so it's coming. So my heart is torn again. It's torn during the storm. It's torn again. We got places like bed and breakfast, motels and all, losing reservations. We got the servers and all, at the restaurants and all going. So uh, let's uh, let's try to get upset if we can't go out and eat or something. Other, or it's taking longer to do a takeout and do it. And please don't criticize the people that are in there trying to work, try to get something. If you don't like the way you're being served, hey, go to the grocery store and cook at home. Amen. So, but uh, they're, that's mostly the young people, but they're they're doing their best. Uh, I do want to thank the council and uh, our city manager for uh, stepping in and taking over. And I think he's going to give us a little more update on the on this virus and all. But let's be real careful with it. Mm -hmm. City manager, thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I get into, into that aspect of it, 
I just wanted to thank you. You guys had tough decisions uh, to appoint these members to the board. We had some outstanding applicants. And if you did apply and, and you weren't chosen this time, please do again. Please do not take that as a reflection of some sort of rejection. Uh, we had excellent applicants this time. And I wanted to thank the incumbents that served. They were not reappointed. And I don't want them to take that as a reflection. I know this, this council said you were ready to, and you heard from a lot of citizens. You're all ready to appoint new people to boards and new positions. And, uh, and shake things up. I want to thank uh, Chairman Quarterman and Mr. Stragles for serving on that board, and uh, Chairman Potts and Mr. Nix. Uh, I think I think they did great jobs. And it's, it's not a reflection on the job they did. I think y'all heard from a lot of citizens. They wanted new faces on the board. And um, congratulations to those that were selected. As I told Councilman Butler. When it got elected, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. <laughs> Y'all have got it. Um, so everybody obviously has been bombarded all day long with coronavirus. Uh, been on a lot of calls, a lot of information going around, lots of information from Dr. Davis, our, our DPH district director. I was on a call with uh, with Ad Popple, County Attorney Ad Popple, and. County Manager Patrick's out yesterday with with the with uh, Georgia's Emergency Management Agency, and you know right now, uh, I think the best we can say is do the best we can do. Mm -hmm. We don't have a handle on this yet, and one of the strangest things I think you saw the governor make a decision on the last 30 or so school districts in the state that did not close their schools. He made the decision for them. I think what we've got. Is, and, and we, we've heard on, on countless reports is that children show little to no symptoms of it. They can carry this virus and give it to their grandparents, and, and, and that's a very, very dangerous and severe situation. This virus is hitting older people and those with immune, immune immunodeficiencies and compromised immune system very, very hard. Uh, I think the mortality rate is starting among that, among that category of folks. So, Folks have asked what we intend to do. Well, I've, I've spoken and had a department head meeting with our folks. I told them we've got a city to run, we've got to keep our folks safe. I met with the police department individually and the fire department. Unfortunately for those folks, they're going to be getting the phone calls. I think some people are already calling about, you know, uh, we've seen some national reports, people calling 911 about stores not having toilet paper. Um, so uh, for whatever reason, those guys are at the forefront and they get bombarded with these calls. And sometimes we forget about them and we take them for granted. And you know, they've got families and lives too. So I've, I've, I've instructed them to be as safe as they can. We still gotta protect the public, uh, but take care of them, take care of our city, and they are, they're doing a good job of it. You know, they really don't have a, a choice. They gotta be out there and do it. And they're doing that and we appreciate them for doing that. Uh, we have closed the lobby in conjunction with the counties done the same. Uh, and Dairy Tell are, are probably two, three largest utility and payment providers here in the city. Georgia Power's office is closed, but uh, they're doing the same thing in their offices. We're closing lobbies. We have a drop box here. Uh, but please do not think that if there's an emergency and you need us, we're not going to let you in the building. We're going to do that. Um, Priscilla and her staff have been working real hard on on balancing that between the, the safety of our staff and the safety of other citizens and being able to get that done. Uh, our, our, as you mentioned earlier, Norma Jean and those folks are still going. Uh, they were out there today uh, doing their hard work. I saw them on the sidewalk. So the city's going on. It is. And thanks to the, the leadership that you guys have, and ladies have provided over the last little bit of time here, the last few years, we fortunately have some breathing room for this, but we really don't know what it holds long term or how long this is going to last. I mean, I'm hoping this 15 day period they're giving us, we're going to have something, maybe a vaccine and we're going to see a slowing of the virus. I'm hoping that, and we all are. Uh, but if not, we're prepared to, to do what, we, what we've got to do. As I told the department heads, I told the police officers, uh, I'm right in this with them. I mean, if this reaches a stage we have, you know, layoffs or cutbacks, I'll be the first one to sacrifice along with them. I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything I wouldn't do myself. So 
we're we're preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. And our uh, our citizens, I, I want to remind you, please contact us. Uh, please don't call 911 about toilet paper and things like that. Those guys are busy. But if you have an emergency, call it. They will be there to help you. And we're discussing some other options for senior citizens here in the city too. Uh, getting them some assistance because those are the folks that really need that in order to do that yet. But they really need to shelter in place right now until we got further word on this thing slowing down or not. Closest case I think we have is Charlton County. There was one case, but you know I think we've all seen multiple reports that the virus is probably already in our community. It's just not testing yet. So until if and until that happens, please try to follow the guidelines that are given out nationally and statewide. Maintain social distance. Wash your hands thoroughly. Uh, be respectful of other space and um, try to limit your exposure to large crowds of people as best you can, especially for those folks who are elderly and have compromised immune systems. And there, other than that, I wish I had a definitive answer, but I don't. Our uh, heart goes out to our businesses, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, we don't have a, you and I discussed this last night, we don't have a, a mandate from the state yet. I know that some restaurants are voluntarily closing their, their in-room dining. And I can't imagine the effect that's having on some folks whose livelihood depends on that industry. Uh, you know, my heart goes out to them and I think about this all day long. I'll think about it all night long. I wake up thinking about it. So right now, let's do the best we can do. And I, you know, I don't know if you're technically supposed to say this or not, but I am. I think we just all need to be brave. Absolutely. Those guys, those ladies, I should say, those guys, uh, they're doing a lot behind the scenes people don't know about. We, we have, they have been digging and finding uh, materials that we need, hand sanitizer, masks, um, gloves, and, and I'll tell you, it's scarce right now. They've been doing a great job looking and finding it. Uh, a, lot, a lot of work's going on with those ladies up at City Hall right now. Thank you. Thank, yep. you. thank you. And we appreciate you. Uh, and Darren News keeping us updated with everything yep. else. So thank you. You're missing a lot of sleep too, Kathleen. <laughs> and I know uh, Ms. Mandy with the chamber and everything, yep. they're not the motel, motel tax and everything. Yep. They're probably stretching. So we all are. Yeah. And yep. yep. then we got the Yeah. Any more comments, questions, anything else? Your motion was adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.